everybody. Welcome to study number five in 1 Peter. In our Search the Scriptures study, we are looking today at just 13 verses, the first, uh, or 12 verses, excuse me, the first 12 verses of chapter number three of 1 Peter. And we are going to answer two different questions. From the first seven verses, what qualities in wife and husband make for a happy and a harmonious wedded life? In addition, what special results can sometimes follow if the individuals concerned behave as a Christian wife or a husband should? And from verses 8 through 12, what characteristics are mentioned here that should mark Christians in their relations with one another and with non-Christians who work or speak evil against them? Well, let's look at these first 12 verses of 1 Peter chapter 3. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands. See, Teresa, I told you. I told you you needed to submit. I told you you needed to submit to me. What are you doing? Whatever. whatever. She's saying whatever in there. Oh, well. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives. So you don't submit because I'm already a believer? Oh. That's what she says. I think she needs to study her Bible a little more. Verse 2, when they see the purity and reverence of, our, of your lives. Verse 3, your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine clothes. No shopping for you, Teresa. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You hear that, Teresa? Sarah called Abraham Lord. She's saying whatever again. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil evil, and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. My wife actually is fairly submissive, and I do respect her for that. Verses 1 through 7. She's smiling. What? She's saying whatever in there. <laughs> Verses 1 through 7. What qualities in wife and husband make for a happy and harmonious wedded life? Don't we have a happy and harmonious wedded life? Yes, we do, she says. In addition, what special results can sometimes follow if the individuals concerned behave as a Christian wife or husband should? Wives in this passage are encouraged to be submissive and husbands are to be respectful. And a failure to follow that advice, according to this passage, can lead to one's prayers being hindered. But heeding that advice can also lead to the conversion of the unbelieving spouse. So, wives, be submissive to your husbands, and husbands, respect your wives. From verses 8 through 12, what characteristics are mentioned here that should mark Christians in their relations with one another and with non-Christians who work or speak evil against them? Well, Christians should likewise live in harmony, harmony, not just with their spouse, but they should live in harmony with one another. And we should also do everything possible to live in harmony with all of those around us, Christian and non-Christian alike. By doing that, we are promised that God will be attentive to our prayers. Uh, just a final note, when it talks about wives not being adorned with uh, clothes and jewelry and all that, that's not saying you can't have those, you can't do that, you can't be beautiful on the outside. It's just saying that kind of beauty fades. That's not what's really important. What's really important is that inward beauty, and that's what your spouse really 
loves you for, and that's why they fell in love with you in the first place. I hope this study has been a blessing to you. Hope you're having a fantastic day, and that God will richly bless the rest of your day. Thank you.